Hello all. Well, today I thought we would go right over to the uh, Yellowstone volcano and some other volcanoes for an update. Uh, let's go over to the board and I'll show you what I'm going to be talking about. Okay, these uh, scientists uh, published a paper in this scientific journal and others. Uh, this theory about uh, Yellowstone National Park and other supervolcanoes. What they found out from lots of research around the world, but mostly about uh, Yellowstone, is that when a supervolcano erupts, it used to be thought that the weather would take the plume downwind. And um, because of that theory, for that, that works for regular volcanoes, but for supervolcanoes, they found out especially uh, Yellowstone caldera, which is here, when it erupts, there's a, over a 1,000 mile area all the way around the mountain that receives pyroclastic th flows and it also can get up to three feet of ash in a 1,000 mile radius. The, they also found out that these volcanoes, when they're a super eruption, make their own weather. So the old theory has been sort of put on its head a little bit with this. Let me show you. Now this is the U.S. Just a rough kind of picture of it. Okay. And Yellowstone is here. The old theory was that the super volcano would put a big plume out like this or maybe like this. But with their study and the way they came about doing this was they went and measured different thicknesses and matched it to the certain volcano. So if they found let's say one quarter inch of ash in this deposit and it was 300 miles from the volcano, they know that this translates into about three feet at the time of the volcano, but since then it has uh, dwindled all the way down to a quarter inch or less. And in many places the ash has completely disappeared, mostly from weathering and uh, water erosion. So what they found out is instead of having that type of pattern, that the U.S. regularly, that the pattern is more omnidirectional, like this. And that most of California, Washington, Idaho, Montana, parts of Nevada are the ones that will be covered with three feet of ash and see large lava flows and um, a killing radius of about 1,000 miles. So if you're in one, the killing radius of 1,000 miles of Yellowstone, if it was to erupt in a supervolcano, that would be the killing zone according to the information these guys found. They also found out that most of the ash from all these supervolcanoes erodes away very quickly and they can only measure around three to four hundred miles around the volcano to get accurate readings and anything farther away is sort of iffy and that is where and why they got the, the, the uh, wrong information according to this new study. So, that's uh, the latest update with Yellowstone. But let's go over to another volcano that uh, is having some problems here in California. So another volcano that's a super volcano is the Long Valley Caldera here in uh, California, USA. The uh, pattern that this volcano will have if it was to erupt would be something like this with the killing zone over 1,000 miles. This is where I live. The caldera is about here. We're far more interested in this volcano than we are Yellowstone. Let me show you why. So, in the last few days, we've had 
1,500 small earthquakes in the caldera. They're still shaking at this moment. Let's go over to the USGS earthquake map and have a glance at the thing. So in the past history, this volcano has erupted far bigger uh, pyroclastic flows and ash clouds than uh, Yellowstone. Either Yellowstone or the Long Valley caldera, if they were to erupt in a full-blown supervolcano, we'd all be dead anyway. Some would just die later on from severe cold and starvation, while others might uh, burn to death from ash clouds and pyroclastic plastic flows. That's a hard one. Uh, pyroclastic flows. Yeah. So anyway, I wanted to bring that uh, information up to you, uh, out to you. There's a lot of uh, news coming out, both on volcanoes and other things like the wars. We also have another small volcano in the North Bay of San Francisco that's been getting lots and lots of earthquake swarms. That one will be a small one if it does erupt. We'll keep an eye on that one too. <laughs> so. Um, I appreciate all the last comments and the new subscribers and the ups and the downs and anything else you guys feel like doing. Till next time.